All right, for number 18, we are to sketch and find the values of the six trigonometric functions for angle theta, given that the point 4 comma negative 7 lies on the terminal side. Let's draw that sketch. All right, 4 comma negative 7, here comes the sketch. All right, so this is over 4 and down 7. All right, so here is the point 4 comma negative 7. Let's just draw a sketch of it. Uh, it would be right about here. Okay, so let me just go ahead and draw this. This will be the hypotenuse of a triangle that I'm going to draw in a moment. Um, now, if I draw a triangle by making a vertical line to the x-axis, then uh, the y value of this point, negative 7, I could use that as this side of the triangle because this is down 7. The x value means that this point is over 4 to the right, so that makes it the length of this side of the triangle. Now, even though in reality, when we talk about an angle in standard position, um, Okay, an angle that has this as a terminal side is this angle that goes all the way around and back to here. However, as we do these trig functions, we can use the reference angle uh, to build the trig functions as long as we're careful about the signs. So, for example, by using negative 7, um, that will help us guarantee that we will have the correct sign for these trig functions. So we can go ahead and build our trig functions using the reference angle. But first we need to know the hypotenuse. So let's do the Pythagorean theorem. So we have um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 4 squared plus 7 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared so that's going to be 16 plus 49. So that's 65. So that means the hypotenuse is going to be the square root of 65. The hypotenuse is always to be seen as positive. Now, we can set up the trig function. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So using the reference angle. Um, opposite is negative 7 and the hypotenuse is radical 65. So this will be negative 7 over radical 65. Cosine is adjacent leg over hypotenuse. So that will be 4 over radical 65. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that would be negative 7 over Four. Now these are the reciprocal trig functions and they are nicely matched up for us so the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine so this should be negative radical 65 over 7 and this should be radical 65 over 4 and this should be negative 4 over 7. All right, let's take a look at number 19. For number 19, they mentioned that the uh, quadrant is the third quadrant. So let, uh, let's go ahead and draw our sketch into the third quadrant. So if I'm dealing with an angle that is in the third quadrant, all right, now, Let's go ahead and draw a triangle by dropping a vertical line from the x-axis. And let's use this as our reference angle. Now, cosine <coughs> is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to use that negative 3 is going to be my adjacent leg. And so the 7 is the hypotenuse. Um, so we're going to need the opposite leg over here. And whatever we get, it's going to need to be negative. So be careful. This is down. All right, so we can only use the reference angle if we're very careful about the signs. 
So this should be a negative uh, y value here. So uh, let's go ahead and do the Pythagorean theorem though. I'm going to call this y. So y squared plus 3 squared should equal 7 squared. So this is going to be y squared plus 9 is equal to 49. So y squared is equal to 40. So y is equal to the square root of 40. And uh, this simplifies because uh, the square root of 40 is 4 times 10, square root of 4 times square root of 10. So this is 2 radical 10. So this y value is 2 radical 10, so that's what I'm going to put down. Oh yeah, but don't forget this is going to be negative, negative 2 radical 10. Okay, with that set up, we should be able to write down all of these trick functions. Now, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that is negative 2 radical 10 over 7. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, um, which we already had, but it's good to see the consistency. This is negative 3 over 7. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's a negative divided by a negative, so that will be a positive. So I'm going to go ahead and just put 2 radical 10 over 3. The negatives cancel out. All right, so there we have that. Now these are the reciprocal trig functions, but let us be careful. If I take the reciprocal here, now I have negative 7 over 2 radical 10. Now I'm not going to allow you to keep 2 radical 10 in the denominator like this. So let's go ahead and rationalize the denominator by uh, multiplying by radical 10 in the numerator and the denominator. So that's going to give us negative 7 radical 10 over 20. Okay, radical 10 times radical 10 is 10. 2 times 10 is 20. Okay, so that will give us negative 7 radical 10 over 20. Okay, similarly, well, okay, the reciprocal of this will just be negative 7 over 3, so no big deal. Um, but this one, cotangent, if I do the reciprocal, I've got 3 over 2 radical 10. Uh, you're not allowed to keep this like this, so we're going to have to rationalize the denominator. Okay, and again, this is 2 times 10. Alright, this makes 10, so that's going to be 20. So I'm going to have 3 radical 10 over 20. Alright, so that's it for number 19. Let's do one more, which is very similar. Let's take a look at number 20. This time, we're dealing with the second quadrant. All right, so I'm going to draw my terminal side out into the second quadrant. Um, now, if the secant is negative radical 27 over 5, then that means that the um, cosine which is the reciprocal trig function, would be negative um, radical, I'm sorry, negative 5 over radical 27. That's important because um, in this form we can see that we're looking at the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, um, the hypotenuse should always be considered positive. So notice how I move the negative up here with the 5. Okay, so negative 5. Also, uh, radical 27, we really want to simplify that. Uh, we know there's going to be a 9 inside of there. Okay, so radical 27 
is the same thing as uh, radical 9 times radical 3. So this is really 3 radical 3. Okay, so cosine is negative 5 over 3 radical 3. <clears throat> so that's your adjacent and your hypotenuse. Okay, so let's make a triangle out of this. Okay, and again, we will use the reference angle, even though the actual angle looks like this. Uh, we can use this reference angle as long as we are very careful about the signs. Um, <clears throat> for example, the hypotenuse, which is 3 radical 3, is always to be considered positive. So there's my 3 radical 3. Uh, but the adjacent leg, I'm going to be very careful to put that as negative 5, which makes sense because it's over here going to the left. And uh, we're going to need the Pythagorean theorem to find the vertical leg. And we're going to make sure that stays positive because it is above the x-axis. All right, so as I do my Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to call this y. Um, so we have uh, y squared plus 5 squared is going to equal the hypotenuse squared. Um, remember, the hypotenuse was originally radical 27, so I'm going to actually put this back to radical 27 uh, just because it makes these calculations easier. Okay, um, so leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So that's going to give me y squared plus 25 is equal to 27 all right squaring this makes a radical just go away um, subtracting 25 from both sides so I have y squared is equal to 2 so y is equal to the square root of 2 okay so this is the square root of 2 right here um, so this time they're not asking me for all of the trig functions, just sine. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, I'm going to just change colors for a second. So opposite over hypotenuse. So this should be uh, radical 2 over 3 radical 3. So this is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, again, this is positive because it's above. Now, we're not allowed to keep 3 radical 3 in the denominator like this, so we will rationalize the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply the numerator and denominator by radical 3. So that's going to give us radical 6 over 3 times 3. All right, radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. So that's going to give me radical 6 over 9. So that is the final answer. All right, the sine of theta equals radical 6 over 9. And that's going to do it for this video. I hope it was helpful, and I will see you on the next video.